And we're back now with the man heading up the state of New Jersey's investigation into so-called Bridgegate, Assemblyman John Wisniewski. Uh, let me just start off by asking you this, sir. Uh, Governor Christie's point was he did not know. Do you think that's possible? Good morning, Bob, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. I don't think it's credible for a governor to have his chief of staff, his communication director, his deputy chief of staff, all involved, his chief counsel, all involved in email communications on the day this took place and the days after, talking not only about the problems that were created in Fort Lee, but also talking about how to spin it to the press. I don't think it's possible for all of those people to be involved and know, and for the governor to absolutely have no communication. Remember, this was in the midst of his reelection campaign. Any governor running for reelection is going to want to know about problems that come up, if for no other reason, to know how to respond when asked a question. So these people got an email from the executive director of the Port Authority saying that laws were broken. His chief counsel knew, his deputy chief of staff knew, his incoming chief of staff knew. It just strains credibility that they didn't look at those documents and say, we ought to let him know about it. So at this point, though, and you're very early in your investigation, you don't right. have any proof that he did know. But from what you're saying, if it proves that he did know, then what? Is, has a crime been committed here? Well, whether he knew or not isn't the issue of the crime. I mean, clearly, in my opinion, uh, when you use the George Washington Bridge for what the email showed to be a political payback, that amounts to using public property for a private purpose or for a political purpose, and that's not legal. And so that constitutes a crime. Now, whether or not he was knowledgeable about it, whether he authorized it, whether he was involved in trying to spin it or cover it up, we don't have any direct communication, emails, documents that directly go to him. Well, but could he, if, if it turns out that this is, as you define it, a crime, could he be impeached or what would be the penalty? Well, I think we're a little early on that, Bob. I think you're, you pointed out at the beginning we're at the early stages of this. But clearly, if it becomes known that the governor was involved uh, and he knew about it and he knew about the cover-up and he was uh, approving the actions taken by his senior staff, that raises serious questions that the assembly ought to look at and that ought to be considered in light of what our responsibility is. The, the assembly has the ability to uh, do articles of impeachment. We're way ahead of that, though. Right now, we know that there are senior staffers in the governor's office. Bridget Kelly, who sent the email, his deputy chief of staff on August 13, to close the lanes down, she spent the rest of the day with the governor at the fire scene at the seaside boardwalk. And so, again, you know, this senior aide who was with him that day, who sent the order, never once communicated with him? It's unbelievable. All right. Well, Mr. Assemblyman, I want to thank you for being with us, and uh, we'll be checking back with you to see what you found out. Thank you. Back Bob. with some personal thoughts in just a minute.